Fourth place of the LPL from last split. We're able to take down FPX as IG return for Rift Rivals, looking much stronger, a lot more cohesive in that first match back now into cross conference. But we also get another team coming back from Rift Rivals playing today. It's going to be Rogue Warriors who take on Sunning Gaming, Raz. Yep, so it's going to be good to see Rogue Warriors and how they look because. Rogue Warriors coming back from Rift Rivals, a lot of people are wondering, okay, well, what do they actually learn? <laughs> and it feels like the major lesson from them after they got demolished by KT, but then it was getting a little better, especially in their major victory versus King Zone, was that they can actually just play this style. I also learned that SMLZ has no emotions, Russ. They have, you knew that beforehand. No, 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 no. They, they won Rift Rivals. That was a major event. He yes. sent the LPL into the finals. They were crowned the champions, the heroes of China. Yep. He didn't smile. He took a sip of his tea cup thingy. That's true. Maybe he values the tea cup thingy. He is a robot. Just putting it out there. Okay. Smells he's a robot. So is iBoy. We've got lots of robots in this league. Raz is going to be one of them, but let's dive into this match a little bit further. And we're going to start with talking about Rogue Warriors when they return from Rift Rivals because they were the team that sent the LPL in to the finals, allowed RNG that final match. In fact, that's what RNG asked for. RNG told Rogue Warriors, told Mouse before the game, look, go into this, win it for us, and then we'll win it for the LPL. And that's exactly what Rogue Warriors did. And the goal to run this composition and get that going for themselves was incredible. And I'm talking about Kled but mid, GP top, that's, that's standard. But the Karthus bottom lane, that's something we've seen in the LPL up to this point, but no one really expected them to put that out in an international game. They haven't got the opportunity to do that. So the fact that Rogue Warriors to take this composition against the second best team in the world, a lot of people consider the best in King Zone, and to just thrash them, sent waves of globally. Remember, globally I say this because a whole lot of people right now are picking up Kled into the mid lane. Plenty from the LCK. You see Bjergsen's you know, running that in solo queue. That's a lesson that people are learning that Kled mid, not, can't, you know, might not just be a do and be favorite. It might be something real that they should be running themselves. It was started by do and be was played in the LPL. Not many teams really respected that pick of the mid lane and did so well for do and be as well during the regular split taking. It's Rift Rivals showcasing it there. Now coming back, we'll have to see if he actually continues to play the champion in the mid lane. There's another mid lane champion, Rez, that oh. uh, Doin B used to pick up from time to time, What's known that? as a little old Aatrox. Uh, this was before his rework, and we said, oh, maybe after the rework, he's not going to go mid lane anymore. It turns out he's special. a mid laner now. Yeah, it's not that special. Aatrox can go wherever he wants. He's too good of a champion. Please nerf him out of existence. Uh, we just buffed him. How can we nerf him? <laughs> I don't want to He got that. a Look, he went to Rift Rivals, had such a high presence rate after what? After day one, day two, and then he was hot fixed. After we got out of Rift Rivals, he got more buffs, Raz. We can't nerf, we just gave him his buffs. All I'm saying right now is It's like giving a little kid strong. candy and saying, no, you can't have it anymore. They Take it away. definitely do that. That's, that kid is too fat. That's just the case of it, and he has to realize that early on so he doesn't find himself 20 years old and wanting more candy. So, at the end of the day, lessons we can learn from, uh, that this team can learn right now, Rogue Warriors, is the fact that, yes, they can still play their compositions, but the lessons they learned versus KT was that you can, you should play a lot slower in the early portions of the game. While this is great for team fighting, they're a team fighting team, don't take the unnecessary risk that you have early on in the game. Place the wards if you can. When you go up against the best, when you go up against a slow team, like Sunning Game is a fairly... Slow team? Okay, in the past they were. I'm talking about when they first played. You're right. Right now, they're incredibly fast early game teams. Uh, so they're slow team? <laughs> fairly fast game. But maybe in the uh, future opponents, when they really go up against a slow team, then they can practice that up against them. So, you know, play a better game in the early portions of it so you can be the Rogue Warriors that we know you are in team fights. Well, it's not going to be that much of a slow team, so we'll have to see how Suning play against Rogue Warriors in this match. Rogue Warriors will definitely be feeling confident and feeling happy after their international debut as a team. It's a band of misfits forming together from many former teams, taking third place in the Spring Split, doing well at Rift Rivals, and they're up against Suning. Xiao, Hacker, Angel, Fury, as well as you. Now, Angel is someone no one knows about, coming from the LDL. Got a championships in the LBL when he was alongside Tyloo, so you'll get to know him. He is their new mid laner now. Going to Rogue Warriors, Mouse in the top lane, Flawless in the jungle, Doom B mid lane, in the bottom lane, SMLZ and Killua. You got it wrong though. It's not Doom B in the mid lane. That's super carry Doom B in the mid lane, Raz. Come on, get it right. Look, you can add as many adjectives, whatever you want, 
He's doing me at the end of the day. That's what it says in the back of his jersey. What was it? Uh, there was a graphic for him on the Chinese stream, which was Super Carry Dancing Star Mega Doinbi. Yeah, it just keeps like going. Just, you know, you just got to stop it at some point. No. And make it as simple as possible for our new viewers. Now we're going full Joy Miller on Doinbi's name, right? It's not, it's not going to stop. Now with this much focus that we place towards Rogue Warriors, I want to shift that focus now towards Sunning Gaming because Sunning Gaming, we haven't seen them for about 13 or so days since Rift Rivals began. They made a massive change in bringing in Angelo. Now, his name is now Angel, so he's, he changed that up a little bit. It's great to see that they moved towards him because they had Fen Fen. Fen Fen is a fantastic performer, but has a limited champion pool towards the Aurelia and towards, I would say, the Kassadin as well. He's bound up one game in it so far this time around, but uh, he has a limited champion pool. What Angelo brings, much larger champion pool, team fighting uh, versatility, because when he was in the LDL with Tyloo, the best thing that he actually brought to his team was proper flanking with the Swain, Rise, and Cassiopeia. Uh, not so much the Cassiopeia, the Rise and the Swain, he, he's, that's the one he's flanking with. When he's Cassiopeia, you ain't going there. <laughs> you have to be with your team. He's not flanking on the Snake. I want to see if he is a, uh, if he comes in confident. That's what I want to see immediately. When Knight played, it took some time for him to really yep. be confident on Sage. And the way I would put this is that Angelo is not as good as Knight. Knight is a one in a million that we'll ever see. He's, he's an incredible talent. Wasn't rookie of the split though. He's a rookie of the split in my heart and he is. Get that propaganda out of here. But maybe Angelo can stop or at least end the split with that same nature if he comes in kicking and punching at the start. Because to be honest, Suning's mid lane woes have been quite a worrying trend. First with Knight having contract difficulties with the team, not able to start during summer split. Then Fen Fen showing up, he had a decent performance for himself and then those questions towards his limited champion pool. Now they're up against Rogue Warriors, the heroes from Rift Rivals. It's going to be a tough match nonetheless and they're currently sitting in playoff contention at 3-3. Three and three. So let's get into this first match and send it over to our casters. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Mr. Fisherman. We're going to be back for this one and Pulse. This is Rusty as we get into this match. It's going to be Sooning Gaming versus Rogue Warriors. Now, Rogue Warriors, where do we put them back into the stack ranking? Because before they were like the fourth best team. Now they go to Rift Rivals. They smack King Zone. They put them in the kill zone. Now, where are they? Probably still fourth, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, how do you else still rank this team? They beat a disaster of an international team in yep. King Zone, right? Now, we'll give them credit. They I was, saved the LPL. They did. I was very impressed with Rogue Warriors, but now we're back in the domestic play, and now we get to see if they can go up from fourth, and I think that's the important thing we can take away from it. They showed the potential. They showed they don't crack under pressure. They showed that even SMLZ doesn't crack a smile under that pressure until after they win backstage when he's not meant to see it. He does smile. Yep. Secrets, I know. Spoilers. But... I do think they're still a top four team. I think they are still in fourth place and they're now fighting to get above that position. What if SMLZ, he puts on a character? Maybe he's like completely different backstage. I don't think you can win an international and still not ever smile. He's just really like, good at acting, man. Give that man an Oscar. He is the best actor I've ever seen, <laughs> if that's the <laughs> case. All right, let's get into the champion select. Soon in gaming, we'll take away the Kled and Camille. Get that away from Doinby. Don't let him play it. Probably going to be an Antrox. No, not going to be an Antrox. It's going to be a Talia ban from Sunin Gaming. Rogue Warriors will remove the Swain and Nocturne from Sunin Gaming. Trying to remove some of that tempo from there. Yeah, but you've got to get rid of the Aatrox now, or they're going to lock that one in first. So naturally, Red Side should always be removing the Aatrox. That's the name of the game right now, and that's what the meta dictates. And the Swain also being removed, the Nocturne being matched by Talia on the opposite side. There is not a lot of junglers still up and available. I'm curious to see what direction they go. Sejuani has been seeing a lot more of as well. My heart skipped a beat when we hovered over Quinn, but not to be seen. It will be a Sejuani first pick. Just a solid one coming in for Sunin Gaming and also giving it over to Hacker. Very much a stable part of this team right now. Makes sense to prioritize something comfortable for him in the jungle. And taking away from Flawless as well, the Sejuani. He's a pretty good Flawless player. A pretty good Sejuani player. We've seen a lot of that one now. The opportunity for Rogue Warriors is there if they wanted to lock in the duo bottom lane. I would be surprised if they go the full duo though. Usually with one, there comes the other. Indeed, indeed. It will be the Rakan first pick. Also note that uh, Flawless, after Rift Rivals and during Rift Rivals, uh, capitalized the L in his name. 
He so did. I feel like we need to call him Flawless now. Make sure there's that uh, capitalization and that punctuation in the right place. I mean, there's also a, car a player from the LJL whose name is Vivid, but he has a capital D. Oh, so okay. I'll let you decide how you want to pronounce that one. But I Vivid went with Vivid. Yeah. yeah. No, I went with Vivid D. Oh, Vivid D. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I'm thinking about Flawless. Anyway, he's going to lock in the Trundle. Could be for himself. We'll see. Tuning over to them. Remember, Angel now coming in for this squad. Let's see what he's made of. It used to be Angelo. He's lost the letter. Maybe hey, he's lost the O. Maybe after this game, Rogue Warriors will drop another, uh, another letter off his name. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be Angie after the end of the day. We'll see. Uh, Zoe going to be locked in, though. So most likely going to go to Angel in that mid lane. And now they are looking at themselves a Tam Kench or a support for themselves. It will be Shen in the end. I like the Shen. Of course, the Tam Kench is possible, but it means you're going to be going something like an AD carry and does reveal that fairly early into it when you've got the Shen. You could be the Vladimir, you know, you could be the mage bottom lane if you choose. And Rogue Warrior is unsurprising with their champions of choice. Trundle even for Flawless is a very strong pick in the jungle position, plain and simple. And very good into Sejuani. Remember that that was always the traditional counter. This was one of the champions that pushed Sejuani out of the meta and started to see other things like Graze versus Trundle. Because you just press R on a Sejuani that has Aftershock going and you win. You're unkillable and she is very fragile. Indeed. The Predator to the Sejuani in the jungle. We'll see if it works out this game. And we are looking towards the next couple of bands. It will be a Darius coming in to, uh, into Rogue Warriors' band list, followed by a Talon. Well, that from doing. We saw that again at Rift Rouse as well. And Gangplank, just pressing the R in the jungle. And no R for Sooning Gaming. That was a bad joke, I'm sorry. Uh, Sooning Gaming, last band over to them. Where are they going to put it? Is it going to be towards Doin' again? We'll see. Maybe another tank, perhaps an Orn. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could get rid of another mid laner. He's played Poppy, he's played Orn. You could try and ban things away from him. I think at the same time, you know, this is one of those bans that is directed towards Doimbi, weirdly enough. And weirdly enough, past that is also a tank champion for Doimbi because he rushes Righteous Glory. So just keep that in mind. You won't get to see it, but he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Mundo locked in for Rogue Warriors. So most likely just going to go to Mouse in the top lane. Yes, he can play carries, but more often than not, we see him on a nice tank in the top lane. Complementing the carries and the team very well. Join me and SMLZ will always deal enough damage. Too many carries spoil the broth, and Rogue Warriors are very cognizant of that fact. Sunni gaming over to them. Moving towards a bot laner could very well be the Lucian for Fury, and it will be locked in as well. 51% win rate on that champion overall in the LPL the split. Yeah, you're expecting Lucian Chen now to go together on a top laner to be seen for Xiao Al. He is a bruiser god in that top lane. He is a player that we came into the start of this split and Sinning Gaming, yes, they're three and three, but they were very quickly three and oh when they had a super carry top laner in Xiao Al. He loves himself. The Renekton Cannon's a very good champion to fit that bill as well. Yep. We'll be able to do a lot of work. Well, hang on. I'm not sure you can, uh, you know, start calling everybody a super carry now. I mean, but he was for three games. He was. All he's right. not super carry hyper mega doing B man, <laughs> but he's definitely still a big carry in that top lane. Super carry fragilistic expiali docious. Oh, I messed that one up. Damn. I'll get it back later on. Nail that Mary Poppins reference. But uh, yeah, join B in the mid lane. Always going to be big for the team, no matter what he is bringing to the table. And this time it will be a Lulu for the mid lane. And we saw him bring the calm route. Yeah, the many shades of doing B, is it not? This is the support iteration of him. Has got the bruises, has got the tanks. Haven't really seen a traditional mage from him unless that mage can build tanky. So Lulu now going to be supporting SMLZ. And what better a player to do it with than when SMLZ gets a hyper carry? And that was a cannon, by the way, picked up by Shao Ao. Now, the last cannon I saw was an AP cannon. Did you watch Marin? Yes. No, uh, it was also, well, yes, but also it was in the LPL that I actually casted. And it was an AP out of Ray. Ray's cannon on EDG. Was it? I thought he went AD that game. Well, no, because I remember screaming at the top of my lungs as he flanked topside onto a Swain, and he killed everybody with his All Maelstrom. Right. I'm going to abstain from this because I don't remember well enough, but I thought Brass it was AD. on Twitter, so refer to him. No matter. It's most likely going to be an AD one in this game. He's against the Mundo in top lane. You want to try and scale up in that lane. Blade of the Rowan King, naturally. A, a big way to try and get victory up there. And for the rest of the team, I don't think it's all about getting that 5v5 Wombo team fight. Sejuani is really the only reliable engage, but I mean, Sooner Gaming's team composition to me is all about the early snowball. That's what I'm looking at when I see this team. So we will be looking towards the jungle, the mid lane, what they can get done in that 2v2. And if things go right for them, things will go very right when you get the double blade of the Ruin King potentially there from a cannon and a Lucian. 
indeed. It can get out of control. Now, I'm also looking towards a certain someone in the mid lane. A certain angelic mid laner, and that'll be Angel. And he's got the Zoe this game. So how good is he going to be on this Zoe? Are we going to see like a Yugao level of Zoe? Are we going to see a Knight level of Zoe? A Knight Zoe? level? Hey, yeah. 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 I mean, it's always the question. He is replacing one of the best players in the world in that middle lane, but we haven't seen Knight this split. Angel comes in and he's got to be better than Fen Fen. That's at least the goal. As good as Knight is a difficult thing to achieve, yeah, but I have no doubt he'll try. Well, the crowd's all here, stayed in from game one. Of course, they want to see some Rogue Warriors action as we head into the second game. So once again, Shanghai. I hand it over to you. Maybe. Of course, uh, SMLZ homage on the bottom left of your screen. Super backwards. carry Rogue Warriors, not just Super Carry Dwayne B on that particular one. And note that we are still in the Shanghai Battle Arena. There is no home arena for a lot of these teams competing, but Rogue Warriors with a resurgence, maybe even just a massive surge in followers after their Rift Rivals performance. Mm -hmm. The heart and soul of the LPL on their backs, they got victory. So there'll still be a lot of people here in the arena for this game in support of Rogue Warriors. Oh, for sure. And I definitely feel like Rogue Warriors have just ruined my solo queue existence as well. The amount of Clairds and tank mid laners I'm seeing running around and just doing beef fanatics everywhere, man. But now he's back over to this Lulu looking to support his bot laner. The eggs are firmly in the SMLZ basket as we take a look at the keystones. It will be Ares apiece in the mid lane, Angel and Doinby. Top lane is going to be an Ares from Shao Ao, and it will be also a grasp onto the Mundo. An Ares for Shao Ao tends to shift me towards the AP just that little bit more. Usually press the attack is the AD carry cannon option of choice, but you can still do both. That's just a rune. We'll have to see where he goes with his build. Naturally, he's going to pretend he's Marin and start with a cull. The cannon way of life. Yeah, gonna be a core, gonna be a Doran's Blade, something like that. Just for the early game, it will always be superior, as it always has been for Kennen. Now in this bottom lane, Fury and you. Nice dodge away nice from the knock up. And the response there onto Clear as well is big from you. Now chasing down the Aftershock Fury, taking some damage out of those minions or from those minions. But still, trading up there, Sune. So it is trading up, but note that Kalua was the one who took all of the damage, where it was Fury on the opposite side for Sune Gaming. Now that is one potion against three. So ultimately there will be more health available for Kalua, and he's got a heal on that Q. So it will be a good thing for Rogue Warriors in the end. The Risk was dying in that trade and he was able to survive. It was a risky start, but still not the worst outcome. Not at all. Hacker on his way to the bottom lane here. Now Trundle, as you were mentioning, is a nice counter to the Sejuani, but is looking no, towards that level yet. 6 at that point. Now he's moving towards the spot oh! flashing after! The lead is huge coming in from Yoon, and that will set your first blood for Sunin Gaming. Here comes Flawless for the counter going. Hacker taking a lot of damage, will be falling right here to pick us down, and Yoon and Fury backing up. Flawless looking Teleport's for the follow in. and the noose is being closed around Sunin. Fury into the bush, cutting vision, turns around! Finds the kill, point blank! That will be a two for two trade. But a buff transfer complete to SMLZ. The change in death timers from 8.13 means that he pretty much instantly respawns and teleports and Fury does the same. So really you don't miss a lot is the end result of this, but it is the double buffs there for SMLZ and that will mean a great deal. However, I hope we get that replay because I just want to take a second to celebrate how bloody good Yoon was with that taunt and then the flash prediction of his opponent's flash. That was one of the sickest things I have seen from a Shen. Absolutely insane coming out from him because this was all planned, all cognizant, follows through and he instantly. Hit the taunt already, I believe, but if he missed, the flash was gonna secure that yep. one regardless. And that's the best case scenario for that Shen. Of course, Flawless was nearby taking that scuttle and then how quickly you respawn and teleport in is absurd. I just assumed it was going to be a top laner or a mid laner coming into the party. Fury picks him up mid chomp, mid auto attack basically to secure that one. Very close. I gave him the knee right there. The gun wasn't reloaded, but it was just enough to tip him over, take down his opponent of Flawless. So that was, a, that was a pretty fun start to the game, wasn't it? So definitely uh, a bit of a departure from our first series that we casted today, Rusty. Yeah, I mean, we're watching a Rogue Warriors game. These are expectations almost. They are a wacky and wild team, but in the best kind of way. If you learn how to get into the mind of them, they are something crazy, but there is... Oh, hang on. Oh, putting him to sleep. We'll be cleansing out of that one. Oh, but the ultimate attack and the ignite. Stop, drop, and roll. It's not going to be enough. Doimi goes down. Yeah, very easy kill there. Angel steps up to the plate and gets himself a solo kill in that middle lane. Doimi does get the cleanse off with no delay. 
and it looked like he'd be fine to get away with that move speed on himself, but still, preyed upon by this Zoe, the Ignite secures it. Big start for Angel in the LPL. Oh yeah, getting a solo kill off of Doinby, the guy who was the big carry coming out of Rift Rivals right there. So that's got to feel good. 3-2 to two now soon in gaming, leading this game in fact. And Hacker on his way into the enemy jungle as well. There's no camps to be taken, though bot lane is pushed up once again. Kalua and SMLZ down here. There is a water spot him out, however. And you're looking at a top lane with the CS lead and most likely control of this lane. You're looking at a mid lane that's got the kills and now also has control. So potential there for Hacker to utilize both of those. Or he can go to the one place that needs it the most. Oh, flashes in the bottom lane. SMLZ being chased down. Here comes his ally to his defense, but he's still going to go down. Now Kalua in a sticky situation. He gets stunned as what a follow up from Hacker is good. And Fury will finish him off beneath the tower. Two more kills to Sunin Gaming. And it's five to two. The gold lead stretching to 2,000 as well. Sunin Gaming aren't just getting early leads. They're running away with this game at six minutes in. This is a great beginning for them in their set against Rogue Warriors. You asked the question at the start of this, are they top four? Are they pushing beyond top four? Well, Sunin Gaming have something to say. They can stay where they are. Oh, they're pulling them back down for certain. Also got a chance to look at uh, Kennen's runes right there on your screen. Looking like an AP Kennen from what I'm seeing with that Nimbus. But let's take a look at that one versus one kill once again onto Doinby. Very early heal from Angel. It was the spell thief heal, of course. And even steals a smite from the middle lane on a minion. That extra bonus damage alongside his ignite. Very clean stuff here from Angel on this Zoe. And just super good awareness of when he can take the fight. Going for it, 100% committed. Gets himself that kill. Tell you what, I'm feeling it. Angel coming in over, of course, you know, replacing someone like Knight, but behind him is Fen Fen. Now, Fen Fen, very much a one trick, two trick. Uh, and I feel like his final trick was getting benched, but uh, we'll see if he comes back. Because ultimately, if people don't figure him out, he will win games by himself. We've seen it on the cast and we've seen it on the Aurelia, but at a certain point in the split, people figure it out. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Kalua jumping back to his ally. But. Once people have picked it out, they just ban the champion as GG. Oh, well, Angel, yeah. great person to have in, in, the, in your back pocket. Absolutely. If he's got a more diverse champion pool, that's already a good start, right? I will say Fen Fen had the picks like a Vladimir as well. He wasn't strictly a one trick. He was very clearly better at one champion than others, but he did have other champions in the repertoire. What you're looking at here for Angel is at the end of the day, someone had to replace Knight, and Fen Fen was just plugging the hole of the boat because he was already there. Right? And he was a good player. He was there with the original Sin and Gaming as well. But he also has tendencies and weaknesses that are often beaten down. And the best opponents are often the ones that take them down. So yeah. this is Sunin Gaming future-proofing and saying we don't want to just be a top four team in our conference. We want to push for top two. You know, we want to actually yeah. make playoffs and make finals, not even just the first round. And I think Angel, if he shows up in the same way that Knight can, it's a great start. Oh, for sure. I mean, Sunin Gaming have done an exceptional job so far just in the LPL. It was a slow ramp when they first came in, but following that, they've just consistently been uh, around the middle to the upper side of middle, and of course, just eking over into playoffs themselves. And also chasing teams like, okay, maybe you can't break into top four right now, but you're looking towards teams like JD Gaming, who were also 5-1 and one heading into Rift Rivals, as were the top four teams. Now, Sunin Gaming looking at them being like, well, why can't we do that in our own conference? Why can't we also try and approach third place, second place, as you said? So, nice to see it out of Sunin Gaming that mm -hmm. uh, they do have a little bit of spunk left in them. And still doing it in the same style of Sunin Gaming. I mean, yeah. if you watch Rift Rivals, you know Rogue Warriors. If you haven't watched the LPL, then you don't know Sin and Gaming at all, and this is a fast-paced team. If you don't know them, they're fast. They get kills, they go aggressively at you. Hacker is the man that you usually look at for all of that early aggression. He made it work on the Sejuani. He gets the lanes rolling. Fury and Yoon are renowned for leaving their lane at the greatest of times to go to other places on the Rift. And it's a teleport Lucian with a Shen that has the ult. So never discount that as a possibility. And that's Sin and Gaming to a T. That early aggression is a hard snowball, and they're a fast winning side. Yeah, for sure. Some of the problems that have haunted them is actually closing the games from there on. They always pick up the advantage in the early game, whether it's a top lane set play, whether it's a bot lane play. Yep. But then actually closing out the game is difficult for them. That's why sometimes they uh, are removed from the conversations when we talk about the fastest game teams, like Invictus Gaming, uh, like LGD, but not in a good way. Uh, Sunin Gaming have a fast early game, but then 
course, are looking to close afterwards. We'll see what Angel can do to try and help that, because a yeah. pick like a Zoe, finding a pick into an objective, of course, accelerates the game even more so in the mid-game. Absolutely. Maybe this extra champions that are available to them could be the difference. There's always yeah. a possibility. Of course, Rogue Warriors are now feeling like they've got a bit of control. Going to start off the Dragon now. There was a Sejuani at the blue buff who had recall, so it should be free to take. Yeah. Should be over to floor less. Bob was not going to harm him, we just have to wait for that one to dissipate. Come on. There, there we we're go. good. I don't know why it stays on the ground for so long, but there you go. I don't know a lot of things about Zoe and why a lot of things <laughs> about Zoe exist. I feel like but if, she does. <laughs> if you put it in the middle of that choke point, it shouldn't block all of it. You should be able to like pick one way or the other. It should completely lock you in. I think it shouldn't stay on the ground. Maybe that's yeah. just me. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough, because even Victor, you know, the gravity field, you can get, kind of get around it. But that you place it on the ground, that's like... That's true, you yeah, don't you don't fire it from midfield at people that yeah. puts <laughs> them to sleep. Like, true. why make Victor at all, if you're just going to make Zoe better Victor? Fair, fair. Ah, Dwayne was probably sighing at that, he likes himself a Victor with a nice one gauntlet in the mid lane. Hacker going to be on uh, Shelly up here, in the top side of River. Should be able to take this one away. He's got Angel pushing up the mid lane, and top lane's also pushing in, so yep. should be relatively free. We have confirmation now, you can see from the Oblivion Orb, it's going to be an AP cannon running through. Morello is most likely the rush against that Mundo too, so it seems like it's... Oh, watch out for the damage there, yeah, it's real cleanse. Uh, it's going to be a half-half between dealing damage as an AP cannon and controlling lane, most likely. So we'll see if that does build in the Morellos as a rush. She needs to get that. Because ultimately, Mundo outscales super hard against an AP cannon. If you have control as Mundo, one item, Spirit Visage perhaps, then you're just snowballing. Ooh, hello. Hacker instantly placing down Shelly into the top side of the map. Is actually moving towards the top side. I hasn't been seen that by Mundo as he turned the corner right there. Mundo's going to do as much damage as he can to her, but... He knows she's there. Yeah, with a Sejuani nearby, definitely needs to respect it and doesn't want to get caught out of position. There's no Flawless to help, as you can see. Is hitting that middle lane and good night. Maybe a good bite. Whoa, taken down very low. Has to instantly hit the subjugate. Here comes Doin B following up though. Gonna be enough from the wild growth there from Doin B, but that's soon in gaming. Pressure in the mid lane one versus two means top lane tower goes down. Shout out, clears out the wave. Said Juani still around top side. Flawless without smite, without his ult. This could be a second charge. Oh. In fact, ooh, I'm surprised that didn't connect. I thought you hacker. Yeah, that's a bit tragic. I don't know if the kill would have been there either way. Flawless even has his flash, but nonetheless, good pressure. Now the pressure moves towards mid lane. Oh. And you don't really need to use the Herald in that middle lane if Angel's got as much control as he does and the wave clear that he has. Scales up very nicely through mid regardless. I think what they wanted here, Sin and Gaming, is to unlock Shao Elf. Yep. By getting that turret down, that means that the cannon can teleport more accessibly and that Mundo is locked in lane more often. He's free. And if a cannon's free and he's got a Morello's done, which he does, that's going to hurt. And a Needless as well, this guy is rapidly ramping up right now, doesn't have the boots just yet, but doesn't really need it. He's also got his uh, perfect timing primed from uh, his runes there, so uh -huh. looking towards his first skirmish, looking towards his first fight, they're going to hit hard. It's going to be a Sucker Punch coming in from Sooning Gaming, and that's definitely what this early game has been so far for them. Yeah, note the ward placed by Rogue Warriors in the bottom lane. There's a control ward just there on the top right of your screen. That's the stop teleport wards. There is no chance that you're getting behind us as the duo if you're Rogue Warriors, because they want to control this lane. They want to push, they want to be freed up to help their jungler. You now as dragons crop up, as opportunities to make plays crop up, they want to be free to move. It's a good move from them, and it's a Storm Razor rush from SMLZ, so he's maximizing his damage output sooner rather than later. Feels like a necessity, honestly. They know the storm is coming. It's going to be a slicing one at that, coming in from the top lane, so prepare for it. Make sure your resources and ducks are in a row before that happens. Next dragon is going to be Infernal as well, so there's a good chance that is going to be the timer in which uh, soon we'll oh, be playing oh. towards. Oh, we're going to go on a journey. It's uh, Ares and a tower and shot, I believe. And we're off here at Summoner's Rift. Keep going. It's going to slow him down as well. He's got Mobies. Oh, oh. oh. oh that's upsetting. I thought you should have committed nah, to that. Nah, I wasn't going to. I didn't know what to say. I've You're the Australian. That, the point is, no one knows what they say at the races. Just seem to happen, 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 that's what you need to do. No, that's auctions, dude. Races, you know exactly <laughs> what they're saying. <laughs> we used to own a horse. I used to go to the races all the time. Our oh, yeah. horse sucked, but it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's fair. You used to live on a farm. Yeah, exactly. We had cows. I mean, we had Did you cows. put them in the race? No, it probably wouldn't no, be bad actually, the, the horse, horse apparently. was uh, in the race, but the horse didn't live on our farm. Oh. Random facts, I don't know why. <laughs> Fair enough, though. 
What a tangent. Anyway, yeah. Angel on the mid lane farming up a storm. 140 farm over to him. Still has that one kill advantage over Doinby. No, Doinby is starting to uh, just push him back just a little, though. This mid lane tower, not long for this world. It will be dropping on just a single push from Suning. And especially if a fight opens up around the, the Infernal Dragon, then you know exactly what Suning Gaming are going to go towards. And that double whammy is something that Rogue Warriors can't just instantly give up. Yeah, and the thing is, Doinby is actually holding his own in mid lane right now. That's the one, perhaps, problem that they're trying to address here soon in gaming. Angel has overstayed his welcome here. He absolutely has, but Hackers here as well. Oh, knocked back towards and Pillar Channel. of Hope is good. Channel comes down and the perfect timing as well, but everyone is nose diving into this fight. Angel's gonna fall, Hacker and Yoon recognize this back away preemptively. 40 seconds away from the Dragon. It's not the worst, Angel will be up in time, but the setup is now gonna go over to Rogue Warriors. And that was Rogue Warriors making the play. That was Kalua being freed up from the bottom lane and getting to the fray faster than even, or matching, I would say, yeah. the Shen in terms of how quick he was able to get there. And that's Rogue Warriors to a T. They make the set play, it's very effective, but that was actually a mistake from Suning Gaming that Rogue Warriors five-man collapse on when possible. This time around, not even top lane is used. And if you're Suning Gaming, you kind of want the top laners to be used. Yeah, maybe feeling a little bit too safe there, Angel. Hacker saying, I've got your back. I'm off to the side, I'm on your flank, just in case something happens. But the pillar of filth was perfect from Flawless. Yeah, definitely was. Of course, the stopwatch, whilst he did try to buy time, was never going to save yeah. his life when Kula was there regardless. And Zoe, the worst, maybe, champion at running away from things when fights Well, happen. she'll run, but then she'll be forced to run back in. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit, bit rough yeah. to play Zoe when running away from things, when kiting from things. You want to poke and push forwards, and if nothing else, be on neutral ground. Now, the next dragon has spawned. That may be the teleport. For the cannon, that may be the entryway into this game if Angel just keeps some health. Well, at the very least, Mouse is going back to base, so he might just gun it towards the dragon and uh, force that teleport to come. Okay, now Shout Out is going to go back to base as well. He doesn't find a teleport advantage up there, not going to be the case. Oh, no, he saves for the wave. So there's a potential here for Rogue Warriors just to bait out the teleport from Shout Out. And I wonder how much gold he's got, because that cull has stacked. That was an needlessly large rod, but he's been up there for quite some time. Yeah, same items. Yeah. So I think he's trying to complete. Uh, Maybe a Zonius. Fury, just gonna jump over this wall, it's gonna be okay, the pillar, rather. May even be a full death cap from him, he's got the stopwatch, and yeah, that's, you know, that's not a component for the Zonias at all, yeah. so... I'll have to see where he goes, I, I like the large rod just for the extra AP immediately, the, the immediate strength is gonna be super valuable for the next fights, but if he uses that stopwatch, he's gonna need to get a Zonias, and that's a lot of gold away, but still we're waiting for that moment, Paul, so waiting for the chance Ooh, hello. to take the fight. We are indeed. Bit of missed synergy there coming out of Rogue Warriors. The blue screen falls real quick. And Angel will still try and control this mid wave along with Shout Out. He's always going to be on these flanks, remember? The old cannon. No, oh, no. that's uh, very early. Uh, he's going to find. Oh, no, we're missing everything now. Soon in game, what's happening? The counter play now coming in for Rogue Warriors. It's a brawl on the front lines. They back away, but the Rakan is dead. Late teleport coming in from SMLZ. Now's the time to turn. Hacker and Yoon on the front lines, blocking up, and Mouse is low. He pops the sadism and looking to move forwards once again. SMLZ feeding it as he walks forwards into Sunin Gaming. But it is a 1 for 0. Yeah, it's a 1 for 0, but Rogue Warriors should be able to get the dragon for free. That was the cannon ultimate used uh, way too early before he was even into the ranks of Rogue Warriors. But Fury is able to pick up the slack and make that play happen. Dragon's already gone, mate. They're not going to get themselves the kill, but Fury's still. Yeah, able to finish it off. Yeah, a bit of a, a disaster in terms of execution there coming from Suning. Almost reminds me of that last series we saw, FPX versus uh, Invictus Gaming earlier today, where the play was, was right, but the execution was just not there. So Duani ultimate missing, the Ken ultimate missing. At the very least, they will get themselves mid lane outer, which is very nice for themselves, but the dragon Certainly. ultimately goes to Rogue Warriors. And it was a stone's throw from falling down regardless. So it is good from Suning Gaming. They knock it down. They do get the overall you know, neutral gain for objectives and the kill. So net gain in terms of gold sure, values sure. for the side of Suning Gaming. You'll see this again. Shaowell on vision, of course, presses ult before he even uses the lightning rush and then just doesn't really get anything done. But watch Fury, because he doesn't even attend this. Just instantly kills Kalur on the way through as he was trying to dash back to safety. But they get that kill from it. 
Yeah, it really was only a squishy who's taken a bunch of damage there. There's a lot of tanky members on the on both front lines, Hacker, Yoon, and Mouse, and Flawless. It doesn't seem like the damage carries have enough to tear through them just yet, so they just walk up the front line, take no damage. But then Kalua, the one who has to be sitting on the front as well, he's the one who can go down. Similarly, uh, Xiao Ao, but he does still have his perfect timing, so... There are squishy members to be taken out. Uh, yeah, I think uh, in the end it was Spellbinders, by the way. To be honest with you, Pulse, I know that a lot of people are very low on crit AD carries. I think we're getting closer and closer to them coming back. And I think the thing that does bring them back is the Storm Razor, though, above mm. all else, not the Infinity Edge type of nice crit. bridge. Yeah, so you're looking at like burst crit. And that means that we'll have Blade of the Ruin King. So on hit, we'll have burst crit damage, and all we're missing is consistent crit. And I'm okay with that, because that's a lot more diversity already. True. You know, one thing that Zyrene tweeted about today, if you didn't see that, is uh, Jin with Hail of Blades on the current patch is actually efficient at level 1 as a keystone for him, for the attack speed bonus that you ah. get. So, I think Jin's now going to crop up again from that alone. If it's efficient at level 1, and Jin can now be speed Jin again that deals damage. Oh boy. We're all in trouble. It's coming for you. I mean, we have a lot of good Jin, uh, Jin players in the LPL. I almost jumped the gun there because I want to talk about Jin Zhao. I mean, he's one of them. Yeah. Aptly named. SMLZ played as well. There are a lot of players who would just play Jin. Yeah, certainly. I, I think Jin will come back. I think other AD carries are coming back. Zyra Khan being picked in a duo lane. You can rush Storm Razors as yep. well. You know, the opportunities are there for them. So I'm excited to see how it progresses moving forwards. And I hope that we don't overbuff the generic crit. That's all I got to say about it. Yep. You want to buff the Jin Eric crit? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! See, I'm, I'm still trying to work in um, adjectives for the beginning of joining his name following on from the analyst desk. Uh, I'm still working on super carry fragilistic expialidocious. See, fits in, right? It fits, but he's not playing a super carry this game. No, but he always calls himself that regardless of whether he's gonna go in and do all the damage or whether he's gonna be the support. Like, he's super support doing B for this game. And he won't be going in this game at all with the Lulu. Of course, he's just going to be preyed upon by the opposing side. That's true, yeah, that's his life, to be honest. He's, he's got a very play. hard job to actually navigate team fights. When you look at his role, usually you'd say SMLZ. Just protect SMLZ, put everything on him, keep him alive. And if the opportunity presents itself, keep Mouse alive in the front line. Because if he actually is a brick wall, you can just turn him into an absolute fridge in front of you then no one can get to your Zyre in the first place. And it's going to be a rapid fire cannon second anyway, so a bit of extra range there. What does fridge mean? An absolute fridge. A unit. A unit. Okay, I understand An unstoppable unit. object. Oh, I see. He's okay. a fridge. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fridge. All right, I guess I was thinking too deep into it. Shower's having a rough time because Mouse is going to keep chasing him down. That briefcase landing is very annoying for him. Yep, and it's an AP cannon with a spellbinder, not so, going to be a death cap. Yeah. And it's against uh, Spirit Visage Mundo, so exactly what we said would happen. As you get one item, Mundo controls lane, and that means it's soon in game and the clock's ticking. You don't have side lane control anymore. You want that team fight, you want that 5v5, you want to get entryway into this game, and I've got a couple of objectives that are up and available, if not now, then very soon, that should be their entryway into a bigger gold lead. Yep. I mean, you want to fight. I mean, that, that's pretty much it from soon in gaming. You have an AP cannon who still has his stopwatch at 22 minutes, has only altered once. Like, you want to get into a fight and make a count. Uh, but now the Baron is on the board, but you've got to be more selective about it, which means that you can't just keep throwing yourselves at the enemy, because if it goes wrong, yeah. Rogue Warriors pick up the Baron, and it all goes wrong. So, it's uh, it's difficult finding that uh, singular fight, but Cannon does have all his resources available to him. Likewise, uh, Rogue Warriors over time. And they're, they're set up for, themselves. for the Baron. You know, yeah. like They're actually assigning themselves towards this objective as the place that they want to go. Now, they haven't cleared vision, so they, they might want to do that first yeah. before they start preying upon lanes. However, once they get that control there, once they set themselves up for it, Rogue Warriors will feel a need to come towards them. Quite simply because the Baron is the most important Whoa. thing in the game. I heard something. That's a ghost. Follow up. Joinby has to go into the cleanse right there. Still chasing down Angel. Yoon backing away from this play. Picks up a <laughs> another cleanse. Of course he did. I'll be Joinby's right there. No, no kills to be seen, however. It was a cleanse from Doimbi. It wasn't a flash. It wasn't an ultimate, so still very much a relevant character. And with Sejuani to not have an ult of her own, not a lot of things that will lock him down besides the cannon now. Yeah. When you look towards Doimbi's building a zone is what, is what it looks like anyway as his next item to survive through that Maelstrom. But things still looking okay here for Rogue Warriors with 4,000, or oh, three to 4,000 being the gold difference. Still very much poised to scale in this game and just win the late game. That's pretty much the goal, but soon in. I mean, at what point are they going to be able to find this fight? Well, Dragon's just spawning. 
It's a couple seconds from now. We skip from five to three. Sorry. If Rogue Warriors go for this and it's not contested by Sin and Gaming, I would be nothing if not disappointed. I feel like Kalu is the one who's going to be contesting. Yeah, he just spots uh, spot Dune and you spotted him. Dragging down to half, looking for the opportunity. Kenan with both his ultimate and his flash available, but Baron El Dragon's about to die. Hacker can find the steal. He has to flash over the wall, and soon in gaming, they're not feeling going for a full on team fight right here. They were only really gunning for that steal from Hacker, which again went awry. Triple Dragon's now to Rogue Warriors. And shout out, what what are Sunin Gaming waiting for? They hold the flex. You know, they prevent Kalua from getting the engage off from behind them. Soon in gaming, now they find an opportunity to step forwards. There is still a teleport ward behind them that they haven't cleared. Oh boy. They haven't cleared the whole area. Rogue Warriors know that it's being done. They know that Shawel isn't there. And look at that control ward placed by Kalua. That's yeah. very active. And they're trying to scout out that cannon. They know the team fight is won by what a cannon can do. And Rogue Warriors, they'll get the dragon, they'll stop the Baron, and they'll get damage on the turrets. And I do feel like Sin and Gaming have lost a big opportunity where they had a sizable gold lead that was reflected through item spikes. Now completely gone. And so the opportunity is available for Rogue Warriors to have an even fight dead in the middle. Which means that Sin and Gaming have to just execute better. And unlike the racers, Rogue Warriors are no longer a one-trick pony. They're not just about going for something weird and going for a team fight. They can show restraint and they know how to play their opponent like a fiddle right here because soon in gaming, I mean, they did, they had the opportunity right there and it felt like Rogue Warriors, they were threatening enough with Kalua on the flank to say, well, if you want to go for it, there's a good chance that we win this fight as well. So, the ball's in your court. What are you going to do? And clearly soon in gaming just held onto the ball and then ran away. Yeah, I mean, in Australian uh, football as well, if you hold onto the ball for too long, it's yep. running with the ball. You're not allowed to run with the ball without bouncing it. So, right. they're running out of time. But here. they bounced it once. I mean, they've given it over to their <laughs> opponents. Is, is, if we want to follow that analogy too far, uh, they've just given the ball over. I'm just saying, my metaphors are not as, like, they're just as bad as yours. You know, it's like quicksand or like molasses. We, we wade in and we just never find a way out. There's no such thing as out once your ankles deep <laughs> in an analogy. True. What goes down? The Angel. great battle of control wards in the river. He needs to respect oh, here. Oh, Angel, oh, honestly. calm down. Walk straight first into SMLZ. Oh, oh no. Kalua, that was not what you needed to do right there. Not reading off the same page as the rest of the team, and they will leave him to die off of that play. Call that one a power in. That's upsetting. That's just really, really Call upsetting. Call that one a shui shui, as I learned today is uh, <laughs> in Chinese. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, the killer whale gets caught out. He flashes forwards trying to find a pick off, but he's not going to get it. He's just gonna die. You take the damage in that situation. That's Rogue Warriors perhaps feeling it a bit too much, or at least Kalua feeling it a little bit too much. But now he's gonna be tempered, brought back into relative aggression. And he'll know yeah. when to go a bit better off. And this means that soon in gaming, they get more control of the Baron Pit. They get a chance to push out bottom as well as Angel was the one who steps up here. That was very needless from the Zoe. And you just take that trade, you threaten the Baron. Kalua, he thought he could get a cheeky pick off. Not a chance in the world. No. Even if that had all landed, he was still over the wall from the rest of his team. There would have been about 17 flashes from Rogue Warriors. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> I definitely don't discount that, but you're right. <laughs> it was pretty far away. As what? that's a lot of vision. Yes, it is. All great flanking wards to be TP'd on. SMLZ has his. That's a risky teleport ward, though. I like that we were shown them, as that is something that Rogue Warriors could do. But if you go on this side of the map, you give up Baron control, and at this stage, you get that feeling that Baron is the only thing that really makes sure. the difference here, so... I'd be shocked if they go bottom for that play. I would be shocked if Kalua decides to go off by himself, use Flash and Ultimate into five people by himself over a wall, but... I guess worse things have happened. Yeah. SMLZ and Kalua find themselves in the top lane. Well, there's Jiwa going to be pushing this one in, and Fury! There's out the minion wave, so he's going to be the one versus two defense right here. Triple man stack from Sooning in the mid lane, pivoting around this one. Yep. But if you look around the river right now, uh, towards that Baron, it's 50-50 in terms of control. Right in the middle, it's kind of like a like a Sooning Rogue Warriors sandwich. I would uh, say most of the control of is Rogue Warriors, though. It's a bit more defensive with some wards that are through the pit itself from Sooning Gamers. So you're right, it is 50-50, but I think overall the river got the control, better 50. yeah. yeah. More favorable type of 50. Of course, not anymore. Sin and Game are going to get a chance to clear that one out. There's no life steal from SMLZ yet. That one ward uh, is being replaced, and the 
ward behind that the first that same ward on his last life, his you previous won't... his previous life, completely destroyed yeah. them, and now it's there again. So I think what you can notice from that, and it's not a big deal, but it is something that's reoccurring, and Rogue Warriors will now know that fact yep. is that when Sunning Gaming clear out vision. They go from mid lane to Baron. They don't go from blue buff to Baron. Yeah. And so whilst a normal sweep from blue buff to Baron would spot that 100%, it's not going to be spotted at all. And they can actually keep replacing it. Even though the rubble is there to say, hey, a ward was here before, no one's going to put two and two together until you VOD review a game like this, sure. right? So ultimately, Sin and Gaming are showing that mid priority. Ooh, connects right onto Flores. He'll flash away from this one. Here comes the teleport as well, but it's slow. Shout out around the top side. There's the Maelstrom onto SMLZ. He buys some time, flashes away, but he is stunned down into the cleanse. He's cutting backwards at the perfect time coming out from Shout Ow. And Kalua comes in. He wipes out Shout Ow from the map. Here comes Mouse. He's on the front lines. He will not die. And Hacker flashes away. Taken up by the Masochism. And Flores is chasing down Fury all by his lonesome. But he might actually find this one versus three right here. Not today. Jumps over the wall, finds the shield, and Kalua follows through once again, missing that one. You with Glutch Teleport on the shield. It's a two-kill advantage to Rogue Warriors. Yeah, Rogue Warriors come out with a win from that trade. Even with the gold deficit, they're able to find the fights. And a lot of that was just SMLZ. Had the ultimate, had the QSS. And so a cannon can't take him down unless it was raw damage. The end result of this is still a massive victory for Rogue Warriors through map control. And the opportunity to start the Baron, it's on. Fury, one versus four going to be chipping away his angel though oh, oh that is most of Joinbee's health but we're charging up another paddle star where is it bloody blocking is mouse right now and that one only serves to help them take the baron now rogue warrior is chasing down everybody angel going to be dead and the roaches have been scattered yoon running through the jungle but smlz will clean him up too that is a double for the AD carry of Rogue Warriors. Yeah, SMLZ is way too strong right now. Frankly, they shouldn't have come up and contested that when they were missing members as it stood. So the Baron goes over to Rogue Warriors and the kills to follow that one up, which means the turrets go down just like that with it. And suddenly that small advantage in a team fight that becomes a Baron look-in is a secure, is kills, and is a massive amount of gold into the pockets of Rogue Warriors. Rogue Warriors with this mini wave coming in as well. We'll be able to topple at least this top lane tower. 15 seconds on Angel, seven on Yoon right here. So this could just be the inhibitor given up. And they're still going. They haven't spent yep. the gold they've earned yet, but they're still pushing forwards. Feel like they're strong enough. And Shao Ao has the ultimate and the Zonyas, but I, I don't know if he knows or anyone knows whether he himself jumping into five members will be able to do enough damage without the rest of the team there. Better to just not ask the question at all. They will lose the inhibitor, and we get to see how that started. And it was actually Suning throwing the ball. And note that Flawless really wants to get a pillar off here, but doesn't have it. So Shao will get in, but he has to flash. So you've got the QSS, you've got the flash locked down there from SMLZ, and he's going to have enough time bought for the rest of the reinforcements to arrive. And note that really, really old control ward that the Observer showed us and how that is useful into trying to get Fury dead. And it's going to be there to spot him, so it gives time for SMLZ to step up and get yep. those autos off. Doesn't get the kill, but does force a Shen ultimate, and suddenly the Baron was Rogue Warriors. Hey, a ward for a Shen ultimate, I'll take it every day of the week. And Suning, yes, they will find themselves a Dragon off the backside of that, but it was Baron to Rogue Warriors, and surely more than that as well. The inhibitor being alive, actually, didn't push for that inhibitor as the respawns were clearing through from Angel, so yeah. top lane tower is exposed there. They waited for the Zoe to come back alive, and this is one of those things that Suning Gaming can absolutely look at in the VOD as well and be like, well, honestly, Contesting it and getting you killed is why we lost the inhib turret. If you just stayed away from it, maybe we could have defended. But of course, that didn't happen. So now Rogue Warriors get the chance to step up and step forwards. But SMLZ still hasn't picked himself up any life steal. He's relying on that red buff yeah. and Ocean Dragon. So the poke from Zoe is still relevant if it hits the right target. It is, and that is something to think about in these siege situations, is that Angel, he's also picked up the Banshee's Veil, so it's easier for him to jump in with the uh, with your portal jump, and then actually look for some harassment down onto Rogue Warriors, and those key squishy members. Shout out also on the flank, Hacker looking flag. for the initiate, but he is walled off right now. Pillar of Filth is fantastic, coming in from Flawless, and that means the rest of the team is dying. Fury on his way, looking for the retreat, but SMLZ is oh. leading the charge! I thought there was some health left, but apparently not. Angel gonna be chased down, knocked up and knocked down and taken off the map. Triple kill to SMLZ and the great cannon chase. Get back here, Lightning Rat. Flawless has completely removed the flank. And they're just gonna push bottom with the Baron minions. This will probably just end the game, to be honest with you, Rogue Warriors. It's all about buying time. Flawless's job is to not die and stop the recall and the game will actually be over. Note that Cannon doesn't even have the ultimate available. Rogue Warriors have done it.
Yes, they have. This is the most depressing life that Sir Xiao has ever had. Completely stalled out by this Trondle, and Rogue Warriors find the opportunity. They come back into the game, and they take game one against Sunit Gaming. 34 odd minutes in as well for the Rogue Warriors. It was not a slow game by any means. They just had a very slow start. And then the control of the map was given back to them. Soon in gaming, just passed off the ball, passed off the control. And honestly, this is one of those moments where you can praise them for the early game. And soon in gaming are known for their early game leads, their mid game closeouts. They drafted for it, they played around it, and then they just never made the choice. They never made the play that would usually close the game out for them and suddenly there's too much of an opportunity for a side like Rogue Warriors. You can't give them that opportunity. You can't let them scale up with the composition that they had, but it happened. I mean, there was two clear plays, you know, it was really just a base around those cannon ultimates, and we call it, it's like the, the ball was served and they were looking for the spike, but they botched it two times in a row. Um, a, a part of that was shower, part of that was the team, of course, when you look for these team fight type compositions, it will fall down to the team, but look at that gold graph as well, led all the way from uh, Sunni Gaming, and at around 12 and around like 18, that's where you're looking for the spikes to happen, the big, big troughs to happen in the gold for Rogue Warriors, but that never happened. It just kind of stabilized, and then they come back at the very end. I mean, so. that's barren to end. The it second is, yeah, the that's, gold, that's, they shift towards yeah. the other side. It was a barren secured, it was the game ended, and there are definitely good signs here from Sunin Gaming. It's Angel's first game in the LPL. He is from the secondary league, the Challenger League, the LDL, and he had good mechanical moments. Him individually in lane looks so super solid. Me. But it was outside of that laning phase, you know, knowledge of perhaps where the rest of the team is. When can yeah. I step up? When can I be aggressive? And gets caught out of position a few times, actually, by just being a little bit too far forwards when he shouldn't be. And yeah. I think these are still positives when you take those getting caught out of positions out of the equation. And note that for his first game, he should only get better with time. Yeah, that's true. It was a great first showing, especially into a team like Rogue Warriors and playing into the chaos. And at the same time, you do look towards the team more than you do Angel. But it's worth noting as we look at the first game for himself. For now, though, we're going to send it over to Anastas to take a look at that game one. Definitely is worth noting Angel's performance because Sinning were able to hold on to just below a 4,000 gold lead for about 24 minutes of that match. Rogue Warriors eventually turned around the game, but the start for Sinning Gaming looks promising against Rogue Warriors. Yeah, especially throughout the bottom lane. I thought that Sinning Gaming had a great understanding of how to play their early laning phases. That Fury was just racking up kills because of all that skirmishing that was happening. I think it was really well played, understanding that it was Flawless's initial ganks that were coming through, but their response was always at a trade. Yeah, there was always something that there was, there was always room for Zinni to try and take something for themselves and did so quite frequently against Rogue Warriors. And we still saw Rogue Warriors a little bit shaky, very similar to the shakiness that we saw when they played against EDG, the set that they lost in the first week. And it's just uncharacteristic because Rift Rail was yesterday had a really poor game one performance when Stake drafted Talon into a full uh, tank composition in their first match at Rift Rivals. Then after that, they started to look much better, even clinching the final game for the LPL, allowing RNG to play that final game, I should say. Coming back to this, we expect them to be much stronger, but showing signs of weakness again, which is a little bit uncharacteristic. In the way they did as well, they're not a team that finds themselves that far in a de deficit early. In fact, their problem is closing out a game. That's yeah. what we saw in Rift Rivals. What we saw beforehand was that their early games would be fairly strong. I mean, I would say Spring Split was where we saw the bottom lane getting targeted heavily, where, which is where they started to find deficits. But Rogue Warriors are a strong early game team around Flawless's early game jungling. This is a good example of them taking unnecessary risks around that and finding themselves in a deficit as a result. And earlier today, we were criticizing IG a little bit on their Game 2 performance because Game 1 from Victor's Gaming was clean. That's what we want from the top tier teams in the LPL when they go up against teams that are lower in the standing. So it's a team that's sitting at fourth place in their own conference. So they're not necessarily an easy opponent to take down. Rogue Warriors were still able to win the match, but with quite a degree of difficulty. In fact, it took a massive outplay coming out from SMLZ to actually turn the game back in Rogue Warriors' favor, although to say they were slowly catching up, this was the big play that made it for them. It's fun that it always comes down to the outplay potential, that the, it was Sunning Gaming gunning for SMLZ's head, recognizing if they can take him out of the fight, they can win it out. Uses his ultimate as a disengage, even QSS, QSS is out of it. Remember, the feather dance that he's placing is another wave of disengage, so you don't want to walk into it, so it was Phenomenal to see that he was able to buy enough time for Mouse to come in and clean up, 
Really strong play from him. Very, definitely a very strong play coming off from Asimov. You know, like something that Rusty said just before that play, and almost felt like Suning had a sizable goalie they could have worked with to actually close the game themselves, but were not able to do so. Their time was a little bit too late. Rogue Warrior's composition came online that lots of ways to protect side at that point, which was showcased there. In fact, they didn't even need that final bit of protection. They were able to just win through that fight of SMLT alone. Yeah, that's what's fun, is that it comes down to the lead that Rogue Warriors start to accrue for themselves, and they only have is a Mundo and a crate AD carry. Yeah. So you have a Zai that really feels protected, and all you have to worry about is the flank that comes out behind you. So I thought that uh, Sunning Gaming, as per usual, early game is on point. Mm -hmm. They were able to challenge Rogue Warriors on that. But they're not that late game team, Raz. Yeah, and so late game is when Rogue Warriors start to come through in the team fights. So... Right now, Rogue, it's Sunning Gaming that needs to find themselves growth around Baron fights, and it's Rogue Warriors that need to be a lot less risk-taking when they're in the early portions of the game. I know Flawless is great in that regard, of being able to have phenomenal early game leads for you, or in this case, find yourselves in deficits. And I think that the lessons that they should learn for Rift Rivals going up against KT is that you can't actually take it, taper it back, take a few minutes for yourselves to just farm up. But at least this time we're able to see Rogue Warriors close out a match. After SMLZ's big outplay, they went to a final team fight, eventually picked up the win through the goalie they had picked up, through the objectives they had picked up. And I, I just wanted to ask the question of, we were criticizing Victus Gaming earlier in their set two for a sloppy performance. Do we criticize Rogue Warriors for a sloppy early game or do we reward them for being able to close out a match in this fashion? I reward Rogue Warriors here for closing out a match because the best thing about that team fight was actually Trundle's pillar that he had behind them. So the only way Sunning Gaming was going to be able to find a back into the man of the match, trying to assassinate him, was through that flank. Pillar stops that entirely. So great state of mind for Rogue Warriors to end up closing this game out cleanly. It was a team effort to protect SMLZ. They're able to do just that. Hopefully it gives them some confidence that if they do fall behind early against a team that is currently top four, like in one of the matches, the weeks that Rogue Warriors will play in, they might be able to find a way back into this. Now, Suning, they are not currently one of those top few teams, but they are fighting for it in their own conference. They're three and three. What do they need to change to become one of the best? Uh, I mentioned the Baron point, and that's something they need to hammer through a little bit more aggressively. Their early game is phenomenal. I'm not going to question that. They're probably the best early game of the league, and I'm putting that Invictus Gaming in the bunch. Remember that. When it comes down to finishing out a game, be a lot more decisive around those. It's a team play thing, and I would like to see that from Sunning Gaming, especially going into game two. Well, let's see if they take their rivals of the e-commerce squad of JD's approach, which is just throw everything at Baron every single time. You're going to fail 90% of the time, but eventually <laughs> you'll start to succeed and look good at taking the objective. That was match one, where Rogue Warriors picked up a late game victory. We're going into a break. We're back with match two in just a bit. <laughs> Zhen Feng Zhao Ji, Fan Ke Sen Ming Yuan Yang, Xia Dao Yong Si, Zi Zai Wei Zhen Si Fang, 